Blonderies takes a huge stand this week as we see some very, very interesting diversity shifts. Special announcement before we get too far into this video here. We have a brand new crossover between Sky Striker and Eris from Moshoku Tensei sporting off an amazing field centerpiece. And actually, let me tell you, this is probably one of my favorite pieces here that we've actually had the chance to make because the aesthetic, you know, the color popping, the background feel, it is absolutely amazing. I'll leave a link down below so you guys can grab yours today. All right, to the 30% of you that have not smashed the ever-living crap out of that subscribe button, smash it so you guys don't miss out on more Oz content. So your next play breakdown this week is a huge shift from what you saw last week. This week, we have seven tier elements smashing through the top cut and that's a pretty disgusting number actually i know a lot of people are going to look at that conversion rate and be like where, where, where were these where were these at last week well um last week was a lot more diverse as we saw super heavy samurai you know actually turn up for this event now this week we also had seven gosh darn by steel synchro decks what do you want me to tell you here this deck is scary, all right? Like the fact that, you know, Chaos Roller and friends get the ability to turn into all these super buff level 10 synchro monsters that your opponent has to find a way to answer. And there's no easy way to do that right now in this format. So a little bit rough, but you can definitely see that your top two metagame contenders are duking it out here on the main stage. Now, in Zoo, advance through this chart here you're going to notice the fact we have two exosister over here the fact that exosister's kind of stepped on up here and is getting access to you know aratama and friends has definitely helped out the progression of this deck immensely and i really do mean that it is very nice to see us we also had two flanderies for this event we also had two little pearlies we had two dark or one dark world one gishki we had a interesting take on cash tira thunder dragon true draco uh, we also had tri brigade i'm not sure what this one is here um looks like madolshe or lahime and we also had a um super heavy samurai player probably returning to uh maintain their title for the week here so good stuff now as we push on in to our top cut here well, 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 where did all of our Bice Steel Dragon Link go? Nowhere to be seen. You had seven of them participating in this event, and none of them got the chance to stick around. That is... They really bullied the competition out of the room. Now, speaking of hilarious bullying here, uh, we did get the chance to see that Tier Elements did secure another spot for this week. Okay, I mean, two tier making it into the top cut. I'm whatever about that, honestly, at this point in time. It's just they're getting the chance to enjoy the stuff before it gets cleaned up on the April ban list, so that's fine. Now, down here, we also had two Flandries lists. Now, this was we were a pretty impressive conversion rate. Both Flandries players made top eight. Um, at this stage, I think a lot of players are not playing for Flanderies, which gives this deck a huge opportunity to capitalize and punish a lot of players. And that is a really important thing right now. When players aren't, you know, being prepared for these matchups, it's giving this deck huge advantages to just take people off guard. So good stuff. We also had a Tri Brigade deck in Top Cut. Uh, we also had a Minkanko deck, but this deck did not make top four. It actually made top eight, but somebody posted it online. So we actually can talk about one of those lists. We also had the Cash Tira deck, the one the one of, by the way. It actually made its way on into the top cut and maintained a presence here. And, of course, purely made it into top cut as well. If you if you haven't been paying attention to the OCG as of late, purely has maintained this hold on the format. Like, this deck has turned into a big old pain in the butt. All right, now the fact that they're able to play Volcanic Shell, and, well, people figured out how to play Volcanic Shell, and the fact that, you know, this engine is now facilitating, oh, look, I can now go through all these discard outlets, and I can set up these huge combos on you, and then your opponent's not going to know what really needs to happen here. Volcanic Show was kind of the icing on the cake to make this deck 
go round. And that was actually a very good thing on Konami's behalf to add in a little bit extra sauce to that. So overall, your top cut for this event, pretty standard. I mean, there is cool diversity to be had here for this format, which is what I really like to see here. But when you can see, you know, Flanderies or something like that actually coming out of the woodwork and doing something, yeah, it's it's a good time out here. Now, our first top cut list here is actually our Flanderies list. Now, remember, the OCG has this deck way more destroyed than we do. They only have one magnificent map. You know, we've lost our barrier statues, both formats have. I think the most interesting thing about this list was they're on triple Mega Ryza. Um, they're relying on Ryza as kind of a, a chance point here to break huge boards and to be able to play the game. I, I perfectly understand that, you know. Um, you need the ability to play the game, and that's what you're going to get with this. Now, we are playing eight pots in this deck. That feels a little bit much, but, you know, in terms of consistency, turnover, the fact that you want to be able to see these cards um, in order to, you know, start getting you through your advantage pieces in order to play the game. I, I'm not too surprised about that. Outside of that, um, you know, looking at this and a lot of the other lists that we've seen throughout this format, I would say that this is considered pretty standard, all things considered. Next up here is, it's our purely list. Ah, oh, man, you know what? I told you, this deck got a hold of Volcanic Shell and now it's just become one of the better decks in the format. The fact that Volcanic Shell just provides you so much free resource management for this deck that you can just filter through, look at your opponent and go, hey, you know, you wanna you wanna ash the shell shirts? And then they're like, uh, uh, and you just laugh at them. Uh, um, like I said, um, fueling all of those discard outlets and, you know, toggling it as, well, Rob, you control double volcanic shell. Yeah, you're right, you can. But this deck doesn't give two craps, all right? It wants to be able to see the resources do its thing. I see we're citing Mudora and Keldo down there. That gives you some resource regeneration and the ability to also interrupt the opponent. I also see we're playing the Herald uh, spell card that also gives you the ability to look into your opponent's hand. That's kind of cute. But outside of that, everything you're looking at here on this list feels, once again, pretty standard from what we've seen. Next up here is our tier element deck. Oh boy! Shadalda deck, aka how fast can this deck make Winda before it loses the game? Now remember, this deck still has six tier element names. The TCG version amputated that down so much more. You know, we're on one-ups. The Ashizu package also got cleaned up. I have a feeling that the OCG is probably going to clean that up here as well. Uh, this deck is also playing triple scream. I mean, to be honest with you, you kind of have to sift through as many of them as you can in order to, you know, get the, the resources going. Plus, it's extra, you know, mills for you to be able to capitalize on. And they're still focusing on the King of the Swamp here because, unfortunately, you know, not having Kit Galos and things like that, you really kind of have to rely on a lot of the back end here in order to get this deck going. Plus, you know, we do get access to, like, the Dark World uh, monster still, you know, and we can, you know, slow roll the window on our opponent, but that's still pretty much what we're expecting here. Next up here is our Kashtira deck. Wow. Um, double planet Pathfinder, but of course, the fact that, you know, Ray Sloth got hit to one and this deck is like, well, you know, now we have to kind of go start relying on other cards. I see we're playing the Right to Phobia here as well to technically go search for the Tier Element Scareclaw monster. So that's that's a free little search there. And I see that we're playing uh, Necro Valley in this deck as well. This deck is turned into a pretty much an anti-meta deck at this point. It's mainly because of the hits that this deck underwent on the previous ban list, which I understand, you know, Kashtira was very crazy with Fenrir and Unicorn running around at those power numbers. You didn't really have much of a choice at the end of the day, but to see those levels of restrictions here. Uh, at least your extra deck feels pretty much the same and so forth here. So no other real strange surprises to me, at least for this deck. I guess the Dark Rule of No More is kind of a result of the format needing those. And then the last ones we have here is our Minkanko good stuff list, um, per se. 
I will say that I am happy to see that, you know, Menkanku is getting the chance to kind of show up here and actually kind of showcase that, hey, you know, we can do things here. And it's essentially just turned into, you know, battle phase reflection damage and then, you know, calling down your relatively big boss monster in order to assist you. Plus, you know, you get access to some of the ritual toolbox shenanigans here. I think this deck is still one of the cooler decks that you can play out here within the format. Actually kind of get away with things. It's expensive. Very, very expensive, but it is definitely a lot of fun. So what do you think about the results out of next play? And let me tell you, these tournament results get more and more interesting by the weekend. As soon as we start to see the metagame shift here, I'm going to be very curious to see what's going to happen. So guys, so comment down below to what you guys think, and I'll see your beautiful faces back here later in the day, guys. Patrons! Thank you! Uh. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Check out these other videos.